Hey there, I'm Ken, this is Canadian Retro Things. Something just arrived on my doorstep. Now, I know I'm a little bit behind the times on the Atari 400 Mini. There have been many, many reviews before this, but I have been very careful not to watch any of those. I did not want to taint the experience of opening this up and uh, playing with it for the first time, trying it out for the first time. So this will be my first time seeing this. So I'm going to open it up, I'm going to play around with it, and I'm going to tell you what I thought about it. But before I do that, I have to give a big thank you to my channel sponsor, without whom these videos would not be possible, Retro Rewind. The mini consoles right now are a great way to get into playing around with these retro computers. But if you want to take the next step and get the real thing, like a Commodore or a Tandy Color computer, then Retro Rewind can help you keep that retro hardware working. They can supply parts like capacitor kits, cartridges to make loading games a breeze, or things to help diagnose problems. So, visit Retro Rewind today at www.retrorewind.ca and use my discount code of CRT10 at checkout to save 10%. And here is the box. First thing I have to do is get this plastic off of there. Okay, now we look at the box. And we got the 400 mini, 25 games, comes with the joystick, picture of it on the top here it shows you all the systems that uh, it emulates I have that one I have that one I don't have any of those and now looking at the back we've got uh, some of the games that are included here uh, it talks about the joystick here so directional stick self straightening axis left right handed modes and eight buttons. So somehow they fit eight buttons onto here. And yeah. Just some stuff about what's included in the box. So let's open it up. Uh, got some plastic there to cut. There it is, the 400 Mini. And the joystick. And some quick start guide. And cables. Oh, let's get this box out of the way. So we've got different cables. Now, I think these cables are a nice touch. Just seeing them here, they are not your standard black cables. They actually match the 400 Mini. So that is just, in my opinion, a nice touch. So on the 400 Mini, huh, yeah, very nice. It's, uh, it's a uh, textured keyboard here so it almost feels like it could be a working keyboard I know it's not and the cartridge port does not open got four USB controller jacks here so for four different players it's got they're numbered and on the back you got your power HDMI another USB and your power button
and on the joystick. Now it says it's got eight buttons on it. So we got two buttons there, there, that's three. I think that's a button. Okay, so I found four buttons. I guess I'm going to actually have to read on the other buttons. All right, it's me back again, and I just wanted to let you know that I did have a quick little peruse of the manual, and it does actually show you where all eight of the buttons are. So you've got one, two, three, four, the ring around here are buttons. So five, six, seven, and eight. So they've incorporated four buttons into the ring. So I thought that was kind of interesting. All right, let's go plug this in. Try it out. I've been playing with this unit for a bit and I've formed some opinions. Some are good, some are not so good. I'll start with the bad. The thing that I find the most annoying about this unit is this joystick. All of my life, at least since the early 80s when I first played Atari, I've been holding the joystick like this. It makes it very convenient for me to hit the fire button with my thumb. But when I really get intense into a game, it means that I'm also accidentally hitting the button that is the top of the ring here. Well, what could I do? I have to change my position of holding this joystick. No big deal. So now I'm holding it like this so that I can still hit the fire button. Except now my front finger is constantly hitting the home button right here. This is by far the most annoying thing. Fortunately, there's a really simple fix. Just use a different controller. One of the nice things about the unit here is that depending on the controller you're using, if you want to know what all the buttons do, when you're in the main screen here, you just hit up on the controller and it brings up this little map of what each of the buttons do. So, since I'm annoyed with this joystick, let's try my Xbox controller in here. There, my Xbox controller is now connected. What happens if I hit up on the controller here? Well, it automatically knows that I'm using a different controller and it's showing me what all the buttons here do. Now let's look at the interface on how you choose the games. Now I'm not going to cover exactly which games are on here because I'm almost sure that almost every other reviewer has covered these games. Besides, I can only offer you my opinion on whether I like them or not. Your opinion's probably going to be different. So you access the games on this carousel interface using left and right on the joystick to go through them. As I've shown you before, hitting up will give you the map of what the buttons do. If you push down, it'll give you your saved games for that game. This is another nice touch that uh, they did. They made your save spots look like old Atari cartridges. I like just those little touches like that. Now, saving games is another place that I ran into a lot of trouble. So let's just choose a game here. There we go. So we're playing a game and you got a higher score than you've ever gotten before. And now you want to save the game. Well. I went through and I tried just about every single button combination I could to try to save the game here. And I even read the instructions. Even after reading the instructions, I could not figure out how to save a game. But as it turns out, the way to actually save a game is you have to hit 
the home button here. And then when you're in this state, you can see up in the corner of the screen that there is a little floaty version of the game that you're playing. Now if you push down, that'll move over top of one of the save slots, hit fire, and it goes in there. What really threw me off is that when you're in the middle of the game, you have to actually exit the game to the home screen before you can save it, which I think is just a little bit weird. But now that I know how to do it, it's not that bad. Now that we've got saving figured out, let's look at some other functions. Now, if you look on the joystick, uh, there's a menu button right beside the home button on the top here. Now, I know I said that I'm not particularly fond of this joystick, but I'm showing you how to do it on this one just in case. I mean, this is the one it comes with, so if you don't have another one, this is the one you're going to be using. If you hit the menu button, it brings up a uh, new menu and you get things like display options. So that gives you whether you want it in 4.3, pixel perfect, enabling CRT effects, and you can also choose a frame to go around your game. Then you hit top to back out. Let's enable the CRT effects. So we're 4.3 with CRT effects and a frame around the screen. Now you can go down to language which will allow you to change the language, obviously. Now in advanced options, you've got system options, which at this point is only your music volume. System information will show you if a new uh, version comes out, you can look and see if you need to install it or not. So currently we're running 1.0.0. Zero. You come into here to shut down the device. So cancel or shut down. Legal notices, that's just a bunch of uh, legal notices, obviously. And factory reset if you want to reset and forget all of the things that you've saved on here. So those are your advanced options. Now, what about if you want to use basic? Well, basic is not anywhere on the carousel or in any of the menus currently. What you need to do to get basic is you need a FAT32 um, formatted USB stick. Plug this into the computer. So you can plug it into any one of the front ports, but I like using the back port so it's out of the way. Turn on the computer. And now you're into the carousel. You've got the USB stick plugged in there. Now, mind you, I have no, nothing else on there. Go through and it will find the USB stick there. Hit that and all of a sudden you've got uh, the 400 basic on there. It'll automatically put this on there. So load that up, hit menu to, or hit home to start the game. And you're into basic. Well, you can use the annoying little side keyboard if you want. But I like to have my own USB keyboard to plug in. As you can see, it works. Runs just like basic. Now I do like these uh, basics that they put on here because it's fun to be able to look at these uh, programming old, old computers and just mess around with the basic in them. Every basic is slightly different, so you gotta learn a few new tricks every time you pick up a different computer to try out the basic. So I will show you an interesting thing. I will plug this USB stick into my computer. And here is my USB stick in my computer. Now you'll have to trust me that it was blank when I first put it into the Atari 400 mini. And as you can see, it's added two files to the disk or to the um, drive here. 
There's the 400 basic configure file and the 400 basic ATR file. Now the ATR file is your actual save disk. So you can actually rename that to anything you want. So uh, you could call it uh, Ken's disk. Now that gives me some save spots for basic. But when I plug the, uh, the uh, USB stick back into the 400 mini, it's going to create another the 400 basic ATR disk. So it'll keep creating blank disks as long as you keep changing the names of them. So that's a nice little feature. Now this is also how you get more games onto the uh, 400 mini. As near as I can tell, uh, the 400 mini is only recognizing .bin files, .atr files, and .rom files. I haven't, uh, anything else I've added hasn't worked. So, if you want to put a game on, you just drag it over, put it on. Now, it should be on your disk here, or on your uh, USB drive. You can also do multiplayer game or multi-disc games. So let's put Ultima on there. There's a program disc and a player disc. So how, you ask, do you load these up? Well, I will show you. Now with the USB stick back in, we can move along the carousel to our media access go to that and as you can see the games are in there including Ken's disc which is now our uh, second basic disc also a basic disc to load hero you just select it and uh, you can hit menu if you need to change which setting settings on the thing, which um, game console it's emulating, uh, the type of joystick you're using, you can even custom map the controls. So there, but we're not going to do that, but you can uh, custom choose what you want the keys to do. And once it's in, you just hit the menu button, or the home button to start the game. And boom, there you are. You're into the game. Now, to load a multiplayer game, quite simply go down to say Ultima program disk. We want that as the first disk. So we hit the fire button. Then you go up to the player disk and you hit the little corner button here. That loads it as a second disk. And then home to start the game. And I do still have my keyboard plugged in, so now you want to enter, put that uh, player disc into drive one, which uh, we currently have the game disc in. So you do that by pushing the bottom of the ring and the home button at the same time. So then you saw it flashed up two of two, so the second disc is now in there. Hit, well, hit return, and I can now make a character to play Ultima. You can do this with games of up to three discs. But what if the game includes more than three discs? Well, I'm glad you asked. Let's get a game installed that's more than three discs. 
Okay, we are back in the USB stick here. Now you can see a couple of things. We have added a 400 basic.atr file. So a second basic disk is now there. And we've also got a configuration file for Hero because I went into the configuration thing. So if I had changed anything, it's now saved any changes that I wanted for uh, reconfiguring the joystick and whatnot. Now, to make a game of more than three disks, create a new folder. Let's call it Dark Crystal. Drop all of the disk images into this file, which there are six of them. Now the next thing that we want to do is open a notepad up. Make a new notepad. Basically make a list of the disks. So they are in the dark crystal um, file. So let's just copy that six times. So six and now we need the names of the disks. So then we just now yes they are all disk one but I will change that in a second. And then you save that. Anyways, you've got a text file here. Now we're going to rename it and we're changing it from a text file to an M3U file. So now that it is an M3U file, we can plug that back into the Atari Mini. All right, we are back into the carousel. And as you can see, there is a Dark Crystal folder. There's also a Dark Crystal disk. So what you want to do is select the Dark Crystal disk and that's all you have to do. That will automatically mount all six disks. And now it's asking for side B, which would be the second disk. Now you do this exactly the same way with uh, hitting the home button and the bottom of the ring. So now it's two of sixes in there. I highly suggest having a USB keyboard plugged in. It's just up here off screen, so um, not sure why, but this isn't in color. Um, I don't know what the option key is. Anyway, that is how you load a multi-disc game like this of more than three discs. You can do it the other way with by individually mounting the three disc games, but you can also make one of these files for a two or three disc system and it will just automatically mount them for you. So that is a great little tidbit of uh, being able to work with this. And now just as one quick little aside, the game Mule apparently is not um, it's got some problems. It's missing a few things in this version. That will be fixed in the first update. But for now, if you, I'll put a link down to where you can get it. But uh, from the main website of the Atari 400 Mini, you can link to download the actual complete version of Mule and just stick it on a USB stick to play it if that is what you want to do. Or you can wait for the upgrade. And that is the Atari 400 Mini.
is this better than, say, playing the games on an emulator? Well, there's certainly a bit of a hit of nostalgia, having this little system sitting in front of you while you're playing. And capturing footage is so much easier off of this, for the systems included, over actually having the original systems sitting there. And the 25 games that are included on here, well, they're kind of irrelevant because it's so easy to just add your own games using a USB stick. But they are good, solid games that I'm going to enjoy playing most of them. The sports games, I'm not a big sports game fan, so I'm probably not going to play them. Now, the joystick is not my favorite. There are a lot of the games that I can play with it. They're all the ones that don't have anything mapped to the uh, top button on the ring. Then I have no problems. For the ones where that is a problem, I'm using either my Xbox controller or the controller that came with my C64 Mini. So that's simple to get around. Now, uh, when they built this, I think they missed a golden opportunity. If I had designed this, I would have made the cartridge port so that it could open. And rather than having the USB on the back for adding the games in, I would have had the cartridge port open and have an SD card slot in there. that You could close the cartridge port just like putting an actual cartridge in it. But other than that, um, yeah, I would say it's a little bit on the expensive side. But then again, really almost everything that's retro related nowadays is a little bit on the expensive side. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed my look at the Atari 400 Mini. If you did, don't forget that a like, a subscribe, and a comment below are all things that help the channel out a lot and are greatly appreciated. But until next time, I guess I will see you later.